Hi, Martin here. Today, we're going to change the uh, seals out on your Pitman shaft steering gearbox. Uh, that is the lower seals, uh, the shaft coming out of the bottom of your steering gearbox where your Pitman arm hooks to. Um, you're going to need a few special tools. One is a Pitman arm puller, and then the appropriate socket uh, to get that nut off. Um, in my case here on this 04 and quite a few other Jeeps for uh, even the XJs and ZJs, a 1 and 5 sixteenths uh, will work. A 33 millimeter would be the appropriate size. All right, and you know, you're going to need a breaker bar or a air impact to get that nut off. It is generally on pretty tight. Okay, I picked up the seal kit at AutoZone. This is a Duralast part number 8717. The kit itself comes with the uh, upper and lower seal, a washer, and the lock ring. And all of this is uh, $7. It also, it does not come with instructions, but a breakdown of what it all looks like, uh, take it apart. And this is, would be a complete breakdown. All we're worried about is right here, down here. Um, this is a general one. This is not even specific to this steering gearbox in my WJ. All right, then uh, you may need to raise your vehicle, maybe not. My particular one I do, uh, if you got a lifted vehicle, you could probably do it without having to raise the vehicle at all. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm underneath the vehicle here, driver's side. Here's your uh, pitman shaft, pitman arm right here. Um, you can see you know how wet it is right there so this it's been soaking up here it drips down and after a few days I get a, a small puddle so it's not leaking really bad but uh, it's to the point where I definitely want to change it um, now you do have a skid plate here which is in the way um, you kind of have a shot through here. I mean, I would say it's be very difficult to change this with the skid plate here. So I am going to remove it. And there are four bolts that hold it on. Right there. There, and then two on the other side. Okay, I got two of the bolts out and two of them loose. Ready to pull the skid plate out of the way. There we go. Okay, now with the skid plate out of the way, I mean you got a really clear shot of your pitman arm and that nut right there. Nothing in the way. Now I'm first going to try to just break this loose with the breaker bar. Not everybody's got air, right? So, we'll see what we can do here. Oh, turn the whole steering system. Oh, there we go. Not as bad as I thought. Now, what I would recommend, I got the lock washer here, you can go ahead and take that off. What I would do is put the nut back on. Because when this thing pops off, it's going to come flying down and smack you right in the face. Not a good thing. So, leave the nut on. We put the puller on here. It's going to pop to this up to the nut. And after that, it's, it's loose. And you can just take the nut off and pull the pitman arm off. By hand. All right, I got my Pitman arm puller here. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight, like $10 or so. I got a small amount of grease supplied on the end of this, so it helps spin it in the end of the shaft. 
just place it on here slide it on up into position put it on the center of the shaft like so get your wrench on here and these are on tight all right, gotta switch the breaker bar. You could use air impact at this point. Um, you gotta be careful how much tension you put on if you do do an air impact, because I've seen these break or bend. Another thing that really helps, you get this pretty tight and then just start giving that little tap with a hammer. Watch your eyes so you don't get no stuff falling down in them. Like that. Then tighten it up some more. Oh god, that sucker is tight. There we go. I can feel it now. It's coming. There it goes. You can see that by having the nut on there, it doesn't fall in your face. Okay. What you can do, hold this up here, Pitman arm, take your nut off. And I mean, I don't think you can get it on here wrong because they do have a different type of spline at a couple points. But I get right underneath here, and I got this little like center punch. And make it like a little mark right there and it marks straight across from it. Then when I put this Pittman arm back on, I can line it up and make sure I got it right at the right location. Let's see what we got in here. I'm hoping that's just a bunch of dirt. Okay, you gotta get this cleaned out because we gotta get to the C-clip that's in here. Okay, I got it cleaned out. And then I discover there is no C-clip holding that seal in there, which is a real bad thing. Because I was going to show you this real cool trick in driving these, or getting those seals out of there. But I'm not able to do that. Now, there's no way to hook those seals or anything uh, with the pitman shaft in the way. So the next step is to remove the pitman shaft. Um, this whole thing would be easier, yes. Remove this whole steering gearbox, do this on the bench. One thing I'd hate about that is, here's your bolts. And you can see the two right back there, hiding behind the windshield washer tank. Right there. So, inner fender well, washer tank, take the front tire off. But the only way you can get to are these two right here. So what I'm going to attempt to do is to remove the four bolts on the top of the steering gear box. I'll okay, show you. Raise the hood. 
and we're looking at right here. There's these four bolts right here, top of the steering gear box. Uh, you wouldn't have to touch this one here, that's an adjustment. The unfortunate part of this, I would like to remove the shaft entirely and do it, but now we're talking upper radiator hose in the way. It's always something. Say clean up around this area here. I'm going to remove these four bolts, raise this shaft up a, several inches so it is not sticking out of the bottom of the uh, steering gearbox there, and we can get a hold of those seals. It's a 15 millimeter socket. You're going to find them uh, surprisingly tight. Okay, now what we've got to do is drive the shaft up. I'm going to use this type of hammer here so it doesn't damage these threads. Now, before you start to strike this upward, the shaft up, make sure your steering is in the center. There we go. The uh, short power steering line that comes right to here, I did disconnect that. Uh, just make it hopefully a little easier to pull that up. You could opt it to get the other seal kit that comes with this seal right here. And actually this would be a good time to change it. Um, pull the shaft all the way out. You're going to have to remove the upper radiator hose. Be careful not to get any contaminants down here in the gearbox. I did spray some carb cleaner around this, you know, to blow off any of uh, the dirt that was around it. Get in there and get that out of there. There we go. Okay, that's the thin one. And you want to take note at how it was orientated in here, okay? So you put all the, the new ones back in exactly the same way. So this is the thin one. It's kind of going in backwards, or it looks like it is. Now we got a C clip. All right, you're gonna need yourself a pair of C-clip removal tool here like this one here. Makes the job easier. Squeeze there. See, I got one side of it popped out of the groove. There we go. There it came right out, okay. And there went the washer. So you know that's next. Now all we got left is the last seal. And by looking at it, the uh, plastic part of that seal is facing downward. And there we go. Now get this all cleaned up real good in here before we put the new seals in. Okay, there you can see I got it all nice and clean. There you can see the shaft up there at the top. Just kind of hanging out. And we're ready to put the new seals in. Okay, now we got to just make sure we get everything back in order. So it's this seal first with this nylon washer facing downward. Then comes this metal washer on top of that. Then your C-clip. Then this last O-ring. And you're gonna put it in where it looks like it's kind of facing backwards. You, you might think it goes in this way. It does, it goes in this way here where you're gonna be looking at that ridge, okay? And this seal here is mainly to keep contaminants from getting in here and damaging this seal. Okay, it's not really to prevent oil from leaking. Okay, and then I'm gonna apply grease 
to this surface right in here, all of them. Because as you're sliding that shaft back down in there, that shaft's got splines on it. And we don't want it to act like a saw and be cutting this surface here. You know what I'm saying? So apply grease to this. That'll help it slide on by and not damage your new seal. Now, to get the new seal in there, I found the appropriate size socket. Now that's all going to depend, you know, I'm using, I don't know, what is this, a one and one eighth impact. It just happens to be the perfect size to go up in here. Um, that's going to de depend on, you know, how thick your socket is or whatever. And I'm going to drive those up there one at a time. Okay, I've got the grease applied. Just like that. Take your socket. You can almost push it up there by hand. But not quite. Okay, here we go. Now, you should be able to see that groove there. That looks good, because we want that. That's where our snap ring's gonna go into. There we go. So we got plenty of room for, yep, snap ring to go in. And what's gonna happen, even if you get this up higher than the snap ring is, right now you don't wanna go crazy with it, but um, when we fire this up, the oil pressure in this unit will actually drive that seal down against that snap ring. And that little bit of grease I put on there is holding that uh, washer in place. Get the new snap ring ready here. Oh, so close. A lot of times when you get these in there that far, now you take your socket. And just tap it into place and that snap ring will jump right into that groove just like that remember it facing this way here like I got it I just pressed that up there with my hand, I did. Remember, it's just in there good enough to keep contaminants getting past this seal to the other seal. Now I'm just take a small amount of grease. Place it on there, on the seal surface. That's gonna help make that Pittman shaft slide by a lot easier and no cause any damage to your new seal Okay, now we got that down in place, replaced the four bolts, and then torqued them properly, and hook up this uh, power steering line back up here. We're done up here, and then we'll back down okay, below, ready to reinstall the pitman arm. 
because I got a little indentation I put here and here earlier with that center punch. That's it right there. Lock ring. Nut. Had it running now for a few minutes. And uh, you know, added the fluid and turned the steering wheel back and forth a couple dozen times from lock to lock. And I don't see any leaks. Looking real good. I'm going to put the uh, skid plate back in it and lower the vehicle. Well, that completes that repair. Uh, I've got a lot more projects coming up for the, uh, the Grand Cherokee and the XJ, especially for the 4.7. So uh, please subscribe. And thanks for watching.